last class. Let me just show you the final. Uh, sorry, this one. This one. Yeah. So last class we ended up solving the harmonic oscillator problem in a very different way where we introduce something called ladder operators. And these ladder operators, they raise or lower the energy of the system by changing the wave function. So it jumps from one eigenstate of the Hamiltonian to another. When it's A dagger, we're going up in energy. When it's A, we're going down, we're going down in energy stepwise. So that's why they are called ladder operators. Now we'll uh, do a little more uh, study of these ladder operators and how to handle their algebra. Okay, so uh, but remember that the ladder operators uh, go back to uh, form of A in terms of X and P. So they're directly related to the X and P operators. But their algebra is so beautiful that you will not need to go back. So A can be written as x plus ip by m omega with the constants multiplied and A dagger is x minus ip by m omega with the constant multiplied. But this form you will typically not need most of the time. So only when we found this base wave function, the ground state wave function psi 0, we had to go back to this form and solve the differential equation. But once you have psi zero, you can do a lot by only operating A and A dagger. So the first thing that we will see is some of the properties of A and A dagger. And you know that in quantum mechanics, one important property to check is the commutativity. So this is lecture 15, I believe, today. is 13 September. Okay. So we found out that a psi takes me from psi n to psi n minus 1 and from E0 to E0 minus H cross omega. And A dagger psi, this takes me from psi n to psi n plus 1. Or uh, let's see, okay, let's put it more generally. From E n to n minus h cross omega and here it will take you from e n to e n plus h cross omega. So this is what we know. So now what we'll do is we'll see what the action of a dagger a on psi n x is. Now, first, we need to then write psi nx in terms of psi 0. And what is psi nx? Psi nx is a series of creation operators. That is what the A daggers are called. So n of them acting on the ground state psi 0 x. Remember that the only explicit form of the wave function that we know is psi 0. We don't know the, uh, like psi as a function of x, we only know that for psi 0 x. Because a dagger, the energy is easily translated when you operate a dagger, but we don't yet know what psi nx uh, looks like functionally. So we'll try to find that out as well. Okay, so when we have a string of operators acting on x, we get this 
there is no this is normalized wave function in fact ma'am your happen. voice is breaking oh sorry so okay i hope the connection improves is is, is it okay now yes ma'am okay so uh, this gives you the nth excited wave function but this will have a different normalization constant and that is actually, let me write it as an and this an has a normal uh, has a value which is 1 by root of n factorial just accept it for now i will uh, work it out uh, as a as an exercise okay because if i stop here now then we'll uh, not covered the more important So a n is equal to one by root of n factorial. So now, if I want to act a a dagger on psi n x, then I have one by root of n factorial. Yeah. Ma'am, did you say that we get the value of a n by normalizing it? Yes, yes, you get it by normalizing it. But uh, I'll show you exactly how to do it. you don't really uh, if you have an a dagger to the part and you can't just do a normal integration right you need the functional form and then you can normalize it i'll i'll work it out okay but i'll not just stop there now because i want to show you the action of a dagger a first So there are some gaps that I'm leaving at the moment. So if you, while studying, if you find it out and you can understand, well and good. If not, we'll have a tutorial where we'll work out the gaps. So this is the normalization constant, and then I have a dagger, a, a dagger to the power n, psi zero x. Okay. and we had found out the commutator we know that a dagger a is equal to one uh, sorry a a dagger commutator is equal to one this we know so how can we simplify this Uh, so I have the first a a dagger. So I can have an a a dagger, and then I have an a dagger to the power n minus one. And a dagger, I can write now. One minus a dagger e. Now the action of a dagger a on psi zero. This is zero because remember a is a step down operator or a destruction or annihilation operator. These are just alternative names for a. and since psi zero is the ground state you cannot reduce it any further so it's zero mom yeah mom should it not be 1 plus instead of 1 uh, minus uh, yeah 
well, yeah, it, it will not make a difference because it's real, but okay, yeah. And then you have a dagger, and then you have a dagger to the power n minus one, phi zero x. Okay. Ma'am, but how will that act on the psi of zero first? Like, uh, I mean, it is still uh, ah, a dagger sorry. n minus one is there, right? On the right. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, yeah. So that's why I was getting a little bit confused. I will do that. The thing is, uh, this is what we want to go all the way to psi zero. Okay, so finally. Uh, so let, let me write one more step that will solve. So I have one plus. Uh, so I generate uh, 1 by n a dagger to the power n psi 0x as the first term. And as the second term, we have a dagger, a dagger, a, and a dagger. So I'm taking the other one from this series, and then you have a dagger to the power n minus 2. And then again, you can write a, a dagger as 1 plus a dagger a. And you'll again generate this same term from the 1. So let me write that just to be clear. So I skipped one. Plus. So you can so you can keep shifting, uh, taking out one a dagger from this a dagger to the power n minus two or whatever, and swapping the a dagger as a using the commutator relation. And every time you will generate this same term. So we've already generated two of the same terms, and eventually. When you go to the last one, you will have generated n of these terms by factorial a dagger to the power n psi 0 n, uh, sorry, psi 0 x. And in the final term, you will have root of n factorial a dagger to the power. Uh, there's three of them here. And finally, you will end up with N. Yes, so you will end up with N plus one of this. And you will have A psi zero x. And this is the one which will annihilate psi zero x. And you will, so you, what you have got is that a dagger a acting on psi 0 x, uh, sorry, a dagger, a, a dagger, because the reverse is 0, a, a dagger acting on psi 0 x is equal to n times 
Psi, uh, sorry, on acting on Psi and X. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, so a, a dagger acting on Psi and X is equal to N times Psi and X. This is what you will eventually get. So did you understand this? So every time I swap A and A dagger using the commutator. Ma'am, ma in the, this one, shouldn't we get N minus 3 on the right hand side? Uh, no, no, we are collecting A and A dagger. Sorry, sorry. No. would have taken up one dagger and continues till you exhaust all the A daggers. And eventually you will get A at right at the end, which will annihilate by zero. So in all the algebra that you do with A dagger at A, in most cases the uh, target would be to move an annihilation operator towards the towards psi zero so that you annihilate that term. So that is more or less a general principle which you use to simplify things containing A and uh, expressions with A and A dagger. So in this case, we are trying to evaluate the action of a composite operator A dagger A acting on a arbitrary or eigenstate function any excited, ground or excited state, psi and x, and we find that relation, which actually looks uh, like, uh, looks like an eigenvalue relation, right? So here, if a, a dagger acts on psi and x, you get an eigenvalue, sort of, which is n, and you get back psi and x. So a dagger is basically called sometimes the uh, number operator. So it tells you the uh, what excited state you're dealing with. So if you have an arbitrary function psi and x in your hand and you act a, a dagger on it, the uh, eigenvalue or the value that you get by its action will tell you which excited state you have. So this is the significance of AA dagger. So this is a composite operator which tells you which excited state you have. This is one more important relation, yes. Ma'am, but we started off uh, writing A dagger A and not A A dagger. Did, did I do that? Uh, ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Ah, I'm distracted today. I was working on something else. So now I'm a little bit. Yeah, this is AA dagger and this does not annihilate psi and x. If it was psi 0, it would have annihilated. Yeah. So A dagger A is the composite operator which tells you which excited state you have. So what it is doing is it is uh, it is reducing the excitation level of psi n once and then restoring it. And in doing so, it is finding out which excited state it acted on. So this is one important relation. Then the next thing is we can find out a commutator of A with a long series of A daggers, for instance. And the relation is that the value of the, uh, so the value of this commutator is K A dagger to the power K minus one. Now, can we prove this? So to do this, we will start out with an example 
and we will intuitively show that for any value of k, this is true. So let's start with k dagger square. And you just have need to need yeah. induction, right? To show for any k, we need induction. Uh, you yes, you can use. Uh, well, we're not going to strictly follow induction. We'll do it for k equal to two and k equal to three. And you will be able to see that it will be true for k equal to n. It will not. You don't really need to do it for uh, do it by induction. Of course, you can do it, but it's not necessary here. You you see. I mean, it's uh, it's it's quite. It turns out to be quite a simple expression. So you have a a dagger. So two of them minus. A dagger, A dagger, A. Okay. And here again, we will keep using the commutator. So we'll take A A dagger and write it as one plus A dagger A, A dagger minus. So this we will keep as it is. And notice that if I take a dagger common, I will get a a dagger commutator, of which I know the value. Right? No. Now, if I do with three a dagger operators, a dagger square. A A dagger I can change to A A So basically, I want to take uh, a dagger square eventually common. So I need to generate an a dagger square from this term. From the first and the third term, we already have it. So from the second term, I have to do this uh, commutator trick again. So a dagger a is uh, one plus. A dagger is equal to uh, ma'am, that would be a a dagger minus one. Uh, 
okay but that will not help me what i need to do is i need to get a a dagger squared out so i don't want to i want to shift the a's to the other side so i will have to take not this one but one more one a dagger from here so i'll have to do a dagger and then the a, a dagger i write as One plus a dagger a. So you get my goal, right? I want to take a dagger squared. So you have there. Then I have a, a, another a dagger squared. And then I have a, a dagger. Square a dagger. So I have minus a dagger square a dagger plus. Okay. Uh, the third and the fourth one they cancel among themselves, and I am left with three a dagger. Okay. So with, when I have k equal to two, I get two a dagger. When I have k equal to three, I get three a dagger square. Therefore, we can surmise that if I have a commutator of a with a dagger to the power K, then I will get K and be left with A dagger to the power K minus one. So this is surmise, of course. This is not a proof in that sense. But uh, if you have the patience, you can, of course, uh, show that if it, if this relation is true for K minus one, then you can. Uh, find or prove that it is true for k, and then knowing that we have already proved it for k equal to two or k equal to three, then by induction, it is true for k equal to k. So if you uh, have the patience, you can put it back and do it. But I guess it's uh, enough to see that this will work out if you do the algebra properly for any value of k. Now, similarly, there is the related relation also, the commutator of a dagger with a to the power k, and that is, that has a minus sign. So it's similar to the previous commutator. So you get the Number k in the beginning, and a to the power k gives you uh, results in a to the power k minus one on the right hand side. But you have a negative sign. You can also try this out in, this, in a similar way. You just have to uh, make sure that you get a to the power k minus one common. So if you take a equal to two, then you have to try to get one a on the left in each term. If you take k equal to three, you will have to try to get a square out of each term. So anytime you have a a dagger before uh, the a, you have to use the commutator to move it to the right. So that is basically the general principle which will allow you to uh, do any sort of algebra with creation and annihilation operators. And you see, this is much simpler. Than solving differential equations like we were doing before. Okay, some more relations. So this is one more relation. You can try out the proof. Okay, uh, let me tell you something more about this a dagger a operator. I forgot. I did not write the name. So a dagger a is called the number operator. 
and sometimes you will see written as N. Capital N. And the number operates with a fish. If you have the commutator of N and A, and leave out the hat everywhere. Then, this is a, a, quite a simple proof, so I just do it in one line. This is A dagger A with A. A dagger A commutator, and I'm taking A commutator Commutator on A dagger A, and that is A A dagger minus one. You just have to remember the signs carefully. So whenever you have the answer as a annihilation operator, there is a minus. Please remember. So both for one and annihilation operator, you uh, you have a positive sign. So you remember it in that way. And there are some general forms as well. So n with k to the power k, that is equal to minus k, a to the power k. So when it's with the number operator, you see we don't have k minus 1, we only have k. These are all useful relations, and we do some problems on them as well. So, would you like to see the proofs of this, or you, you want to try it yourself? Ma'am, but I just have one question. That I mean, first of all, how did they find all these things? I mean, just by just by doing this. I mean, like doing this again and again, seeing the pattern, like. Does it yeah, come out exactly. in some 
other physical way. Does it come out in some other physical way? So, to do that, I have to speak a little bit long. The thing is that these uh, operators were introduced in the harmonic oscillator problem. Okay. But they find, found more use when you do the uh, atomic system. Or, or some sort of atomic or molecular system and you want to describe exciting molecules. So these operators allow you to go from a ground state to an excited state very easily. And eventually even the wave function, so now we are still treating the wave function as a function of x. Okay, but the Eventually, when you have many electron systems, you represent these wave functions as uh, in what is called an occupation number representation. So there, you don't have a functional form for the wave function at all. You just talk about uh, the presence or absence of electrons in a given set of functions. So these functions that uh, they are they're a basis and they're predefined. They don't come from the solution of a differential equation. Because you may have heard that the Schrodinger equation is not solvable for anything more than a one electron atom. So the high last one that you can solve exactly. The first and the last. And beyond that, uh, by solvable you mean analytically, right? right. I mean, by solvable, they are still solvable, but not not by an analytic equation method. So you can only solve them numerically to some accuracy. So you don't have an exact wave function representation anyway. What you have is a representation in a uh, set of predefined functions, which you call a basis set. Okay, and then you talk about the occupancy of orbitals which are formed from these basic sets. You have some x dependent functions and you fill them up with electrons. Okay? And when you, you are uh, generating excited states, then you don't talk about these functions at all. You just call them, you know, functions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And they are occupied by n number of electrons. And then with these creation and annihilation operators, you can move electrons between these functions. Okay. And this makes it very simple. Then you don't have to go to the functions at all. Okay. So if you can represent excited states in terms of A dagger and A, then you can just talk about uh, moving an electron from uh, function number 2 to function number 8. So that's where these operators find a lot of use. Okay, so this is sort of um, just the starting point of these operators. And this algebra also then becomes more and more useful when you have more and more electrons and complicated functions. So I don't think, well, we, we will not be going that far. I mean, even in the advanced, uh, at the end of the advanced quantum chemistry course, for those of you who will take it in the fourth year, uh, we again come back to these operators and use them to generate excited functions uh, for an electron correlation problem. But in between, this is just to tell you that uh, there are there is this operator formulation of quantum mechanics in existence, and it's useful. So in this, this course, I don't think you will realize how important they are, but it's important to know that you can do a lot of things with these operators. For the purposes of the course, you have to just be comfortable with handling them. And the only information you need for doing this algebra is the value of the commutator, AA data. Just AA data commutator equal to 1, that is what you need to remember, and then 
but you will have problems with deal with this algebra but you will not really make use of it beyond the harmonic operator i hope you at least appreciate that the operators make solving this harmonic oscillator problem easy i think you will uh, appreciate this even more when i do it in the differential equation form because then we'll have to write long lines so here i'm just writing a and a dagger in strings of operators there you'll see how complicated the x dependent functions turn out to be and you will it, it's even difficult to remember them so we'll see Hello, ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, can you scroll up a bit? Scroll up, okay. Where? How Just more? Yeah, yeah, more. Yeah. Some more, some more. Some more. Okay. Ma'am, uh, ma'am, sorry, but can you please just go bit down? I have to just write what the one line only, the last one. I, I, I just <laughs> completed. Okay, okay, you complete this, and then I'll go back to the previous question. Okay, ma'am, done. Okay. Yeah. Ma'am, I was uh, referring yeah. to the part where you cancelled a sine naught equals zero. And that uh, you know, oh, a sine naught equals zero. Over oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 But ma'am, uh, the operator was uh, a operator was just before a dagger to the power n minus two. So how can we operate the a on sine naught x before? No, 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 no. Here I have done many, many more steps. So here I have done lots. So in a similar way, we have moved all the a daggers to the left. That is why we have got n of these terms. So we get one turn every time we move one a dagger to the left. So here okay, there are many, many more the power steps. becomes zero on the right. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So the last term is generated when the power becomes zero for the a daggers on the right. And then the last one gets animated. Before that, you have to keep swapping them. Okay. And ma'am, I mailed you, and you just replied to me that uh, I did not use the value of uh, Rydberg constant for hydrogen, which is given. Uh, yeah, 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 I saw your mail. That I was looking at that also before, and I got yeah. late for the. Yeah, ma'am. I just used that. I just did not write it separately, but at the last step, I used. You did use it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, at the last step. Very last step. Okay. So what I saw was that this is a valid method. So I was not aware of this method of finding the Rydberg constant, but uh, th this is a valid method. So I'll check where where uh, the discrepancy is arising from. I'll have to okay. put in the values and check. Unfortunately. I'll, I'll let you know. Okay, and let me just finish one more last thing. So, okay. And we have a class. Uh, we have a class? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, then we'll do it next time. Ma'am. Yeah? Ma'am, in the next class, could you show us the proof for either of the last two ones? Any one of them? Uh, the last, uh, or the last one you mean? These, these two? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, any one yeah. of them if you could just show. Okay, sure, sure. I'll continue from here next time. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am.